Hi, and welcome to the STM32 breadboarding lab video. So in this video, I'm gonna cover how to set up the breadboard for part one of the STM32 lab. So from here, you can see that I have my STM32 board pressed into the breadboard. And what I'm gonna talk about next is a little bit about this board itself. So now on the screen, what you'll see is I have two different boards. So depending on the when you're taking this class, we may support one board or another. So on the right, I have my L432KC board. On the left, I have an uh, F303K8. Now, in regards to this video, as you can see, that both breadboards, or I'm sorry, both development boards have a very similar pinout. So as we look to the right, we can see the LEDs V in, ground, reset, five, and then PA two, seven, six, and so on, all the way down to three V three in PB three. And we can see on the L four board that all the pins match identical in regards to this column right here. Now to the left, it's very similar or pretty much the same as well. We have our PA nine, 10, reset, ground, all the way through, except for we'll notice that on the PF zero and one, they're not connected on our L four board. And that's perfectly fine as we're not going to be using those pins in our lab. Though what we do care about are these other pins, PA8, PA11, PAB5, and PB4. And we can see here on both the L4 and the F3 that both are connected. I do want to stipulate in later or more advanced parts of the lab that we might need to use some more advanced configurations, such as SPI, A to C's, UARTs, and PWMs. Depending on which board you're using, you might have different pin configurations. So as we can see here, that in this intersection, it is different for the L4 versus the F3. So just be aware of that, that that might be needed. But for the most part, for, lab, uh, for the STM32 lab, which is parts one and two, we don't need to worry about which board we have. Now going back to the board. So as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that we have this breadboard pressed into, oh, I'm sorry, we have the development board pressed into the breadboard. This way that we can use jumper wires on either side of the connection to wire it up a little more easily, as well as we can make sure that we, if we need to use additional cables, we have those extra pins. Now, what you'll notice is I'm following a simple color code convention to show you for the circuit I built. I have black, which is gonna represent ground. I have red, which is gonna represent power. I have blue, which is going to represent input, and I have yellow, which is going to represent output. Now, in the regards to ground, what you'll notice is I have my ground plugged into the ground pin or GND pin and wired to the ground rail on this side of the board. Now, for me, my ground rail runs continuous all the way across my breadboard all the way to the other side. I do want to point out some breadboards don't have a continuous connection all the way across and usually about halfway through the board they're separated or has a separate connection sometimes this is indicated on the breadboard by a break in the line or by a, some type of notation and in some cases there's no notation or the line could be continuous so please check your lines of continuity on your breadboard to make sure it's continuous all the way through if it's not add a jumper cable going so that way you can make sure that those brakes are passed through if you want to make sure that rail goes all the way across. Now for here I have my LED, a push button, a pull down resistor, as well as a current limiting resistor. Now the exact values I'm not going to worry about getting into too much but for the purposes of the values of resistors I have roughly about a 1k ohm and a 330 ohm resistor. They're not exact, but just keep in mind you want some range around, around those boundaries. So from here, the next thing besides uh, ground is we, I'm using power from the, bread, um, from the development board itself. And here I'm tapping into is the 3V3 or 3.3 volt pin right here. So in my circuit, as you notice, I don't, I'm not using external power from anywhere. I'm using power and ground from the development board itself, which is being captured through the USB cable. Please don't use any external power source as this might damage the board itself. So just use the power and ground that we need for the purposes of this lab from the development board. Now, 
I have my power, which is being wired to one side of my push button. And on the other side, what you'll notice is I have my pull down resistor and my blue wire running all the way across to the other side of my LED, which then is connected to ground. All right. So uh, if we follow the line of a, or the, current, the convention of current, right, I have power, which is traveling through. If my button is pressed, then it creates a connection and then it travels through the blue wire and then across the LED through the current limiter as a sort of ground. So I have a complete circuit from power to ground and this should light up my LED. So if I press my button, you'll see my LED lights up. If I remove, my LED turns off. Now, a couple of things I want to point out on the circuit is that pull down resistor. So if we follow the, the two cases, which is the first one, as I mentioned, the power goes across, or I'm sorry, current travels through, comes, button is pressed, so we've created a connection. It travels through the blue wire to the LED through the current limit resistor to ground. Now, if the button isn't pressed, what we have is this current travels, but stops because we have an open connection. Now from here, we have our blue wire going through. There's nothing passing, no current, no vol pull, uh, voltage potential going through here. And because of that, the LED is not turned on. Now, why is it important that we have this resistor plugged in here? Is simply because this ensures that since we have an open connection, that we have a stable logic level zero. So this is ensuring that our voltage is close to zero as possible in this blue wire. Because physical properties, this may not always be the case, and we might have enough of a potential to actually pass through and turn this LED on. And this could affect my circuit. So please make sure we're using pull down resistors whenever we are trying to wire something as an input, only to make sure we're providing a stable power level. All right, and as well, make sure the current resistor is roughly enough so that we don't blow the LED, right? Uh, one thing I wanna point out is a couple of mistakes. So if you're building your circuit or you build the circuit the same way I have, that you might, if things don't turn on on the LED when you press the button, is one is make sure your button is in the correct configuration. Sometimes you might need to put it on the other side, depending on how this button is rotated. Two is make sure that the pins are lining up properly. So a lot of times students offset a pin of a resistor or a jumper wire off just a little bit to miss it. Another common mistake is the LED is in backwards. So please make sure that you have the LED connected so that the anode side is the side coming from uh, the, the side I have on the blue wire and the cathode side is the side that's connected and going down to ground, right? So, um, and the couple ways you can tell is the anode side is the rounded side and the cathode has a little flat lip on the LED. Now, that's not always the case for all LEDs, but it is very common convention. The other way to follow it is the leads or the length of the leads is the anode, um, the anode side has a longer lead than the cathode side. The cathode side tends to be a little bit shorter. Now, I don't prefer that method as ideal only simply because if you have a secondhand kit or you borrowed a kit, Sometimes people will trim these leads to fit a little closer to the breadboard. And so it's hard to tell if they trim the leads, which one's longer and which one's shorter. So please make sure you're careful when checking that. Um, a lot of times, if you're not sure, the simplest thing is flip the re uh, LED around. There's enough of a um, protection that in this, the voltage that we're handling, it's low enough. You most likely won't damage it if it's backwards uh, for the LED. Now, the other one I wanna point out is make sure that you're putting the wires, as you can see how I built my breadboard, is my pins here are connected, but here, this chip value is separating them. So the continuity does not travel across this big line in the center. So please make sure that you've connected it so you're not shorting your LED, meaning if I've connected my LED the same way before, but have it on one side, then it's never gonna pass through the LED. The current's never gonna travel through the LED. So please make sure that I have one pin on one side and then the pin on the opposite side of this chip valley here or the center, okay? Now, again, if I press the button, it turns on and turns off. So this is important to test this circuit first like this before I've even connected the IO pins I'm going to use in my microdrawer. The reason because I wanna make sure that 
I have a solid power and ground, and as well as my LED and push button are wired correctly. The reason or purposes behind this, as we get through lab, you'll notice that when we start building um, or we start programming our board and trying to run our code with the hardware is if we come across any mistakes or issues. If there's issues, I've already confirmed that my power and ground are working. And now the issues most likely lie with something I've done with the board itself. Either I didn't configure the pins properly, why I chose the wrong pins, or how I've connected them to the blue and yellow wire I'm gonna use isn't correct. So I know my power, I know my ground, I know my push button, I know my pull down resistor, I know my current loading resistor and my LED are all working properly. So at this point, I've eliminated all those as possible suspects that in case I encounter any issues. So please do this first, just to confirm that everything is working properly. And again, I wanna stress, you need to make sure your your board is plugged in in order for this to work. If you're not receiving power, that LED will not turn on. Now for lab one purposes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this blue wire or the one pin to PB3 or D13 as labeled on your board, right? And now I'm gonna connect the yellow wire to D12 or PB4 on my board to the other side of the LED as so. Make sure you press the connections in and everything is nice and stable. Good. So now that I have everything wired and ready to go, I can go ahead and get started on making sure I can program and run my board. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to your lab instructor and look for more videos.